You spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars of hard-earned money on the latest Apple MacBooks and Mac desktops. But the recent M2 Macs have been plagued with slow SSDs, which makes them slower even than their older M1 Macs. You upgrade from M1 to M2 chips and you're actually getting slower performance than your old model. Why is that? What should you be aware of before buying a new Apple Mac? How can you fix this storage issue with the M2 Mac? Interesting information coming up in this video. Before we begin, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post a video every week on various tech-related topics. More links in the description. Okay, Apple is transitioning from Intel chipset-based Macs to their custom Apple Silicon Macs. Apple has already replaced almost their entire Mac lineup with their own M1 or M2 chips. The M1 was their first generation Apple chips and M2 is their newer second generation. The Mac Mini, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro 13, 14, 16 inch all have their second generation generation M2 based chips. So inherently, you would assume everything is better than M1 chip, right? No. A lot of people have discovered their base model M2 Max have slower SSD performance than their M1 Max. How slow? Almost 50% slow read and write speeds compared to the M1. That is a significant performance drop. You can see in this Blackmagic test comparison, comparing a 256GB M2 MacBook Air versus a 512GB M2 MacBook Air. The 256GB base model has a write speed of around 1600Mbps, while the 512GB model can go close to 2200Mbps. That's close to 30% speed drop. If you compare the read speeds, it's even worse. It's over 45% slower compared to the 512GB model. Same is the case with the M2 MacBook Pro models as you can see here. The read speeds on the base model 512GB M2 Pro model is around 3000 Mbps. On the other hand, the 1TB storage model has a read speed of blazing fast 6000 Mbps. That's almost 2x performance compared to the 512GB model. Even if you compare the read speeds to the last generation M1 Pro 512GB model, it had a read speed close to 5000 Mbps, which is over 40% slower when compared to the M1 512GB base model. You can see from these results how bad the storage issues are on the newer M2 model base storage configuration. There's a good video by YouTuber Max Tech where he transfers a large file from an external SSD. The M2 MacBook Pro 256GB model took almost two and a half minutes for the entire transfer, while the 512GB model finished it within 23 seconds. That's almost 5 times faster than the base model. You can see the extent of the real-world performance difference. If you don't perform a lot of copying and file transfers, is the storage issue still important? The SSD storage on Mac is used for much more than just file transfers. You see, since SSDs are fast storage, Mac OS uses the SSD as a swap memory. Meaning, if your memory is under pressure, it will temporarily use the disk to store RAM data until memory pressure gets better. So faster the SSD, better performance overall. I even edit my 4K videos directly off of my SSD. So if that's slow, the entire workflow slows up. The memory or storage are non-expandable on Macs. So if you figure out that your computer is running slow and the slow SSD is contributing to it, you cannot even upgrade the memory or storage later on. Do all the new M2 Macs have this problem? As we saw before, luckily, no. Only the base storage model Mac has this problem, which are the 256 gigs M2 and M2 Pro Mac Mini, 256 gigs MacBook Air and 13 inch MacBook Pro, the 512 gigs 14 and 16 inch M2 Pro and Max MacBook Pros. For the MacBook Pros, 512 GB is the starting storage option and for all the other Macs, 256 GB is the base storage option. If you get the 512 GB Mac Mini or MacBook Air or the 1 terabyte MacBook Pro model, the SSD performance will be much better. What is causing these slow storage issues on the base Mac Minis? Two reasons. One, Obviously, Apple is trying to make you spend more money to upgrade to their larger storage option. Apple storage options are not cheap like I've mentioned in this video. They charge you more dollar per GB than any other storage options you can get in the market. Second reason, a more technical one, their SSD chips on the base storage models are single NAND chips. Let me explain. NAND flash memory are the non-volatile storage technology to store and retrieve data. Thumb drives, micro SSD cards all use this NAND flash memory to 
stored data. Up until M1 chips, Apple had access to max of 128 GB NAND chips. So for their 256 GB model, they had to use two NAND chips. So any read or write could be parallelized while writing to two NAND chips consecutively. This is like filling a pool with two tubes at the same time, almost twice as fast. With the M2 models, Apple has access to higher density NAND chips of 256 GB, meaning they can simply just put one 256 NAND chip in their 256 GB models. The disadvantage? You have killed the parallelism. Even though the new high density 256 GB NAND is faster than the single 128 GB NAND from M1 models, it's still not as fast enough as two NAND chips. Same is the case with the MacBook Pro models as well. Before, Apple used four or more 128 GB NAND chips for their 512 GB model. Now they only use two 256 GB NAND chips. So naturally, it got slower compared to the previous M1 model. So what are my options now? Can I not ever consider the base storage option models at all? Well, it depends on your needs. The base storage model is still plenty fast for most user workloads. Usually, there is another bottleneck even before we hit the I.O. speed limits. But if you are in the category where you need high I.O. speeds, you perform a lot of file transfers, copying, rendering and exporting, you should seriously consider upgrading your base model M2 MacBook or Max to a higher storage version. Especially if you are a pro user getting a MacBook Pro, you should mostly ditch the 512GB model and go for at least a terabyte. On the other hand, if you are a daily casual user getting a MacBook Air for home or college purposes and 256GB storage is sufficient for you, then the slow speeds of the base model won't bother you too much in most cases. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please subscribe to my channel to show your support. I'll see you in the next one. This is Anjana. Bye-bye.